Hello, we are officially entering the summer months, uh, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, so I've got my summery top on and I always like to set myself a summer reading list because I find it pleasurable to, to theme some of my reading around the seasons. So uh, all of these 10 books that I've picked um, have uh, summer in the title or they're set during summer or their cover gives a kind of summery feel. And there's a mixture of some new books, um, some older books and some classic books. So I'd love to hear um, if you have read any of these titles um, and if you would encourage me to, to get to them sooner rather than later, uh, or if you want to join me in reading any of them uh, over the next few months, um, please let me know about that in the comments below. Or if you have any books that you're really looking forward to getting to this summer. To, so to start off with, um, there's a slightly older novel uh, called Summer Water by Sarah Moss. Um, which I've been meaning to read for ages. Um, so this is set during summer during um, amidst a Scottish um, chalet park and follows a number of individuals over a period of days which are very rainy and how people are sort of stuck inside. And so it's following their individual journeys and their interactions with each other. And Moss is just such an excellent writer. Like Water, Like Sea by Olamidi Pupula. Um, this is a novel um, which begins with a, a woman in the, the water, like looking up through the water and trying to witness the world in this way, which just makes me think of swimming in the sea and, and summer holidays. Um, but the, the story um, is quite serious in, in following uh, this young woman um, as she is wrestling with feelings of grief um, over the loss of her sister and how her mother is struggling with mental health issues, but also just following um, her life and her interactions with her friends and relationships. And this is an author who I, I'd read um, their debut novel, which I thought was excellent. So I've been wanting to read more of their work and I'm losing my voice. I need to take a drink of water. <laughs> okay, I think I'm okay now. It's important to stay hydrated in, in the summer. So the next book is The Axeman's Carnival by Catherine Chid and this novel is told from the point of view of a magpie um, who's adopted um, when this magpie is is just a chick and uh, and it's following this uh, bird's point of view um, uh, of the couple um, that it goes to stay with and um, and their difficult relationship but also the larger society around um, them and it gives a very different point of view uh, on the world um, which sounds um, like the, the premise of it sounds quite like gimmicky but I've heard so many good um, reviews and responses to this book that say that it's really meaningful and um, beautiful and yeah just birds just makes me think of summer. The Other Valley by Scott Alexander Howard. Um, the cover of this um, is a very like summery and idyllic scene, but the story sounds really curious and interesting where um, it's looking at um, the, the lives of a number of people in a, a town in a valley, but then in the next valley over, um, there is that same town and those same people, but 20 years later, and then uh, the valley on the other side has that same town again but 20 years in the past. And so um, there are no interactions between um, these different um, valleys and, and towns because that would really disrupt things. But there are tourist mourners um, who travel between them um, to witness and see people um, from the past um, who have been lost and who have died. And it follows um, one individual in particular and, um, and a dilemma she faces when she learns about the death of, of a good friend of hers, um, but that she wasn't supposed to know about. And um, so, yeah, it's a really interesting way of looking at time and mortality. And uh, yeah, I just, I'm really curious about this story. This is Fine by Porna Bell. Um, this is a novel set during the summertime, I'm following a, a woman who's been married for a long period of time and has just kind of settled into this like mediocre existence where she just feels like, oh, well, this is fine. So I'm not going to make any changes. And it's about it's looking at um, how we make those compromises in our life and um, when we're stirred to to 
take action and make real changes in our life. Um, so it's following her over a period of a summer, but also how um, she connects with a niece of hers who's at a very different po point in her life and following very uh, different dilemmas and, um, and is trying to make big life decisions um, and uh, so I really like how this cover like matches the, the flowers that I have over there. The Amendments which is an Irish novel I'm um, following a woman who is about to have a child but before um, she has this child she needs to reckon with her past and her personal history and how she has had a, a child in the past but also has a very difficult and strange relationship with her mother so she travels back to her Irish town and is revisiting um, things from the past and dealing with them and um, I really like how um, on the cover there's a mother and child um, swinging and yeah this just makes me think of summertime. Claremont by Leslie McDowell. Um, this novel is set in the summer of 1816 when Mary and Shelley Percy traveled to Lake Geneva um, to stay with Lord Byron and during this summer famously Mary Shelley wrote um, her great classic Frankenstein um, but also on this trip was Mary Shelley's stepsister who was pregnant with Lord Byron's um, baby and um, so it follows um, her story. She was called Claire Claremont and um, and how um, Lord Byron um, didn't really want this child so um, it's about their strained relationship and the dilemma that she's facing and I really like um, how this is like looking at the lives of authors from the past and telling and untold story, or at least a, a little known story. Next is a recently published um, so-called lost novel by the great Gabriel Garcia Marquez um, called until August, um, following a, a woman who goes on trips and um, has affairs with men, even though she's um, in a happy relationship and marriage. So it's looking at the, the question of morality and, and why um, she might be doing this. And uh, because it's called uh, until August, and um, so following to the end of the summer, um, it just seems like a great um, short summer read. I also love how on the inside it reproduces um, some of the manuscript version of Marquez's book. A modern classic is Summer in Baden-Baden, uh, which was first published in 1981, and it follows a Jewish narrator who traces the path of Fyodor Dostoevsky, who in uh, the 1800s um, traveled to the German spa resort of Baden-Baden um, with his new wife for their honeymoon, um, but how he was going through a lot of turmoil of, of the time. And so um, so the, the, the narrator is retracing their steps and examining the, the journals of Dostoevsky's wife and trying to trace um, this, uh, this great literary author's um, history, um, which I think sounds so fascinating and this is a book that was much beloved uh, by the late great Susan Sontag. And finally there is the classic novel The Custom of the Country by Edith Wharton. Uh, this is a, a novel about a young woman um, from the Midwest who, um, whose family has come into new money and she moves to New York City um, to try to uh, to try to ascend the echelons of uh, upper class New York City and uh, but encounters uh, the, the uncomfortable encounters with um, some of the so-called old money um, of this society and Edith Wharton's writing is so excellent. Uh, my husband um, read this book recently and um, really enjoyed it. Um, we got this copy in America, this really, um, really fun uh, cover to it. And um, and uh, this is a book that's um, uh, different filmmakers have been trying to make it into a movie for um, quite a while. And maybe that'll still happen because um, I think Edith Wharton's work is very adaptable for the, the screen. And um, yeah, it just sounds like such an interesting character. And also, um, for my own summer holidays, I'm going to be traveling to an area of France that Edith Wharton um, lived in for a, a period of time and where she she um, did a lot of writing. Um, so it'll be great to um, to read this like while I'm on my holidays and 
go into um, this area where where Edith Wharton actually lived and, and worked for a period of time. So I, I would love to hear um, if you have read any of these books or if you're interested in reading any of them now, or if you want to let me know about some of your summer reading plans. Um, I'd love to hear about that. But I hope you're um, doing well and that it's sunny and nice weather wherever you are and you get to some good reading over the next few months. And I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.